Who's ready to rock today, Fire Nation? JLD here with an audio masterclass about what they don't want you to know about the lockdown. To drop these value bombs, I have brought Rick Jordan on the mic. He is one of America's leading voices on business, entrepreneurship, life, and cybersecurity. He's the CEO and founder of Reach Out Technology and the host of the podcast, All In with Rick Jordan. And today, Fire Nation, we'll be talking about how real people have been affected by the lockdowns, who we can trust, when will things get better, and so much more when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Fire Nation, with the holiday season right around the corner, Clavio is ready to help you prepare for Cyber Weekend and beyond. Find webinars, guides, and other resources designed to help you make the most of the year's biggest e-commerce opportunity. Visit Clavio.com slash holiday to discover strategies for Cyber Weekends. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash holiday. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Schedule your free consultation today with Clay Clark at thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Rick, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. What's up, Fire Nation? Rick Jordan. I have some really interesting things for you today. But one thing almost nobody knows about me except closest friends is that I'm an amateur tornado chaser. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no joke. I, uh, I actually took my daughter out about three years ago because it's safer for me. I've been through like advanced weather spotting training with the National Weather Service. And when I was seven, that was my first thing I wanted to do for like a quote unquote career was be a meteorologist, specifically a severe weather meteorologist. That's always stuck with me. So I got I got trained up, got the backdoor number to all the nerds at the National Weather Service. And I go out and I hunt <laughs> these things. Man. What's the closest you've ever come? Or have you just driven right into the middle? One that didn't touch down, this was actually this year, was the closest that I've ever come. And my daughter was with me in the car again because I took her out a couple years ago for the first time. She was crying for the first 20 minutes. But then after she saw just the beauty of it, now she just asks if we can go. It's pretty great. But we were, ab- we were maybe about 150 feet it hadn't touched down at that point, but it had prior. So that was probably a little bit. We were driving. It's like, oh, it is right here. <laughs> Man, that is too cool. You have uh, made her a fan <laughs> for life. So that no is doubt, something pretty she's, cool. She's so awesome. All my kids are awesome. She's a, Her humor and my humor kind of sync up. So it, her and I <laughs> enjoy hanging out. Well, speaking of awesome, you've created a film called Liberty Lockdown, and I want to kind of chat about that today. So break down the inspiration of this and the whole story behind it. I've been in a couple of documentaries already, and they're all cybersecurity related. That's sort of my field that I've grown up in over the past several years. And But prior to that, I, I wanted to join the military when I was 17 years old, and so I've always been a patriot if you want to use that word, but more so just I have this deep love in my heart because I've always been more interested in the history of the United States of America than even the history of other nations. Just because it's mind blowing to me that a whole bunch of people would just stand up for what they believe in and create a country literally from nothing. And just standing on their beliefs, foundational, everything. And that's kind of like the background of me and how I feel. And then the producer of the cybercrime movies, which you can see the first one, the second one's still being filmed, but the first one's on Amazon Prime, called me up and he's like, hey, I'm doing this thing. And, you know, you do a lot of TV, you've got a podcast. And I was wondering if you would be interested in this. And I mean, I just jumped at it, right? Because I've got this thing to where I just kind of say yes to everything as long as there's no ethical or moral gut check. And he asked me, hey, would you be able to executive produce this thing also? I'm like, man, if if that's what you're talking about, let's seriously get into this because this is my core. This is my passion of who I am. And I would love to host this at the same time. He's like, I didn't even think about that. That's incredible. That's how it came together back in May. And being in cybersecurity, We were looking at the essential versus the non-essential part of this, you know, and that's one of the questions. It's like, why? And why are in the film, why are some businesses essential and some non-essential? It's pretty easy to figure out some of them, right? And it makes sense. But it's like the others just kind of seemed a little arbitrary to us. And that's just what sparked all this. And just the job loss, man, because as an entrepreneur on fire, 
The reason why I jumped into business for myself when I was laid off 12 years ago rather than just going to work for somebody else is because I love to have a positive impact on people and I love payday. I love being able to write the checks or you know, facilitate the direct deposit and actually give people the finances to, to live, to have their families live an amazing life. That's the thing that really keeps me going and why I take on all this stress, man. So when I saw all of the job loss, Going on from this, that just struck me to my core. And that that was really the inspiration to dive into this thing. And it, ever since then, man, we've been filming. We just finished up filming literally about five days ago in Seattle where this whole coronavirus thing started with the first death and the first uh, reported case in the entire U.S. Well, I want to say, first and foremost, I do share a passion with you for this country. I think it's it's a, such a That's special awesome. place. You know, I was, It is an officer in the U.S. Army for eight years, so I'm a, definitely a Thank proud... You, I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm a very proud combat veteran. Spent 13 months in Iraq as an armor officer and definitely have nothing but love uh, and you know support for the troops and everybody that you know, wears a uniform in this country for sure. Yeah. And yeah. It, it is just such a crazy way you put that too. Like, I love that. That people just kind of stood up you know, for what they believed in and literally created something, you know, out of almost like nothing. Like, you know, I mean, it was such a sparsely populated and like just massive land mass. And, you know, now we have the United States of America with, you know, a couple territories. I'm down here in Puerto Rico. Of course, yeah, you are. We're a very (laughs) proud territory of the United States, for sure. Well, there's always talk of being a 51st state, man. That's been uh, for a couple of decades now. It's been that. We don't want that to happen now. I'm sure. Yeah. Can you, can, I'm a, I know this is my interview, right? But can you, can you give me your perspective on that, please? Because I'm very intrigued on that. I'd love to talk about it because it is, you know, where I live and it's definitely yeah. an interesting thing to debate. But, you know, the reason why myself, you know, somebody who was born in Maine, so I was born in a state and I've lived in yep. the States for my whole life, basically. Why did I move to an island in a territory? Well, first off, you know, it's, it's, it's paradise. But number two, it's a tax haven for entrepreneurs. You move hear, yeah. to Puerto Rico. Yep. The thing is, when you're a territory, a U.S. A US territory, you can't vote for the presidential election. So that is a yep. loss. And Because I, I take my voting very seriously. I, I do vote here in Puerto Rico, but I can't vote for the U.S. election. Um, but because we don't, we don't vote, and this goes back to what you and I are both passionate about, people stood up for no taxation without representation, right? Well, yep, yep. We're, we, we can't be taxed federally because we're not being technically able to vote slash be represented, our votes be represented by the, our presidential election. So we don't pay federal tax. So we only pay a Puerto Rico tax here, which if you're an entrepreneur in a corporation and you move here under Act 20, you pay 4% total tax. No That's state. That's incredible. Wow. No federal, 4%. Dude, I live in Illinois, and that just keeps going up for corporations, man. <laughs> Rick, I moved from California, yeah. 51%. Oh, yep, to yep. Puerto Rico four years ago. Four. I gave myself a 47% tax raise by snapping my fingers and moving here. That's incredible. Have you ever told that story on your show before? I have. I've told yeah. it. Not not like in super depth. You know, I've definitely written some detailed blog posts and there's some YouTube videos about it as well. I like to tell people, if you want to keep the money you make you move to Puerto Rico and now you get to do what you want with your money. And, you know, I've been able to be so much more philanthropic. I've been able to, you know, really just support some different causes that I really believe in and just do some really cool things because of, you know, essentially that uh, 47% raise I gave myself four years ago. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Well, I'm curious too, because I've traveled all over to filming this across the the 48 contiguous states. What's the COVID scenario down in Puerto Rico right now firsthand? It's very, very impressive. We, in fact, are on the same level as the state of Maine, which is the best state in the country. Really? Yeah. Wow. So right now, Puerto Rico has about 374 deaths, um, and we have three and a half million people. So Maine was at like 122 yeah. with a million people. So very um, equitable per on capita. Yeah, per it's, capita, it's per similar. person. Yeah. So they're doing great because, you know, they just went, they got real serious real quick because it's such a touristy island, you know, with cruise yeah. ships yeah. and stuff like that. They just got serious about it really quickly, and they've really stuck stuck to it. And plus, they just know the reality. The hospitals aren't good down here. Sure. Um, and there's other things that are impacted by that. You know, a lot of people who would be in the obese category, so, you know, their immune system's compromised. So there's a lot of reasons why um, they got serious really quick down here, and it's definitely worked out. 
That's awesome, man. That's really good to hear because, I mean, there's some states, whether you want to say they handled it right or handled it wrong, but they're just looking at the numbers, there's some states that are obviously a lot worse than others. You know, you're, you're mentioning Maine that are – that's very – from the outside, it looks very, very good, you know, just from the numbers that are reported. But then there's other states, of course, like Florida recently, Texas, and then California mm. that have all taken, which is crazy to me, right? And, you know, some of the answers that I've gone looking for, it, it just boggles my mind because even with that, you know, if you take a look at, this isn't a political statement, this is just straight data. You've got two red states typically, right, with Florida and Texas. And then you have California, which has been blue for the longest time. And all of them had these crazy spikes in cases, but they all tried to handle this thing a different way. It almost didn't matter what measures they were putting in place or lack of measures thereof. The cases still spiked anyways in these three states that have made a lot of news over the past few months in this so-called second wave. You know, so w with the answers, it's like wh where do we find these things and what is the truth? That's a lot of what the film is about because it just there's just a lot of contradicting information, man. And I think that people are smart. They're engaged, of course, when it concerns their lives and their livelihoods. And if you give them good info, good data, I think people are generally going to make the right call. That's one of the things that I've lost. So you're talking about the passion. What's yeah. the story behind this? The, this is part of the story, man. You know, asking that question, why? So you're a seeker, like you've always been a seeker. You might be oh, yeah, seeking man. storms, you're seeking yep. answers. <laughs> um, where did you specifically go to find these answers and, and really talk about the real people that you were able to find that have been affected by these lockdowns, you know, at a very deep level? The first place that we stopped, and it's really cool because my son, who's 13, he's a, he's been, if you want to call it homeschool, but all three of my kids have been in an online private school before the COVID situation. And they've, they've got virtual teachers. They text message you know, to set up appointments and all that. So he, there's a lot more freedom in travel, which is really great being an entrepreneur because I can integrate my kids into my life Big a little time. bit more back and forth. So I brought him with because he's interested in filmmaking. He has since he's been seven years old. And the first stop we made, he was on this first leg when we were filming and looking for these answers was San Francisco. And this was back in May. And man, the site, and I was so grateful that he was able to see this just firsthand because we're in Union Square in San Francisco and everything's boarded up. And what really got me, it wasn't the fact that there was nobody on the streets, right? Or that there was no people walking or cars driving. Mm. There, there was a few, but that's, a, that's about it. I, and they would go by one car maybe every 10 minutes. And we're talking very, very early in the lockdown. You know, this is the beginning of May. And when I walked outside the hotel, I think it was the Westin that I booked at, which was right in Union Square. I turned to the left and Union Square is a very affluent area of the city. You've got Saks Fifth Avenue, you've got Tiffany's, you've got the Apple store, a bunch of high end stores. And all of these places are boarded up. Oh. <clears throat> the one that really struck me though was Saks. You know, because you would think the jewelry would board up in right. case something happens because that's very, very stealable merchandise. Same with Apple, you know, small devices and everything. But Saks, you know, because uh, one of my favorite stores to shop at, man, especially during Christmas time is in New York at Saks on Fifth Avenue, right in New York. And of course, we know they were hit pretty hard at the beginning of this thing with all the illness and deaths. And when I saw this boarded up, I'm like, that was almost like for me, the equivalent in 2020 of what the Twin Towers was back on 9-11, was seeing the economy just completely closed off. That was mind-blowing to me. And we were there to talk with Alan Zhang, who has the largest Chinese-American radio show in the whole United States. He's also super cool because he broadcasts really a message of freedom and current affairs into China. He hacks his way into China via shortwave and has 93 million listeners in China. Uh, the, he was the very first person that I spoke with. And the craziest thing is that he grew up in Wuhan. That's where he was born, huh. where this whole thing started. You know, so I'm talking with the guy and he just had such a great perspective on communism and then the difference between what America was back in his day when he when he immigrated over here and how America was really looked at as the state of current affairs because in, in China, they broadcast the news, like the daily news, from speakers, like PA speakers on the sides of buildings, and it's from the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP. That's the only form of news that they get, which is why his passion is to broadcast via shortwave and hack his way into China so that he can give them the sort of real news and real state of affairs across the world rather than being filtered by a communist party. 
Uh, it was just the, the parallels were just mind blowing, man, seeing almost like our media scenario here. You know, and I don't care who it is, whether it's Fox, CNN or anybody else, there's always a filter. You know, it, it doesn't matter. And that's one thing that this movie is trying to do is just talk to the real people that are mattering on the streets that are in the middle of this thing and bring what's really happening or what has happened. And like some of the other real people like Lindsey Graham, not the senator, but the salon owner. You've probably seen her in the news. She was on CNN when she just went against the governor's stay at home order in Oregon and opened up her salon in the middle of the lockdown because she felt that it was her rights, her constitutional protected rights to be able to make a living. I mean, true entrepreneur, right? And there were some points that she made that were just incredible to me. She goes, you know what? I have to shut down by my business because the governor told me to, but I still have to pay my lease. Ooh. I still have to pay my utility bills, even though I don't have any revenue coming in. You know, so how does that work? You know, even though some might have done deferment and whatever else, but even like with my landlord at the office space that I have in Chicago, I had a conversation with him and he goes, yeah, I'm like, how are you guys doing? He goes, you know what? We're doing well. He goes, I always appreciate you paying on time. And I'm like, that's because I got a great bookkeeper. That's the only reason I would forget <laughs> personally. Right? But I, I, and he goes, you know what? Because we're a small business too. Right. And that hit me, man. And just thinking of this trail, even with Lindsey Graham, man, and it was just incredible just talking to the real people and how they've been affected by this outside of actually getting ill or sick. Yeah, and, and what effects did that have? Because uh, I'm not going to give it all away, but she was even bullied by the government officials over there by DHS with Child Protective Services mm. and uh, all of that just because she defied the orders. And right in the middle of our interview, man, I don't think this part – it might be in like the bonus features, but right in the middle of the interview, a dude wrote on a pizza box, shoved it up on the window, a death threat to both of us right in the middle of our interview in her salon in Portland saying, you're not a hero. You're a murderer. I'm going to kill you. Watch your back. What? Right in the middle of the interview, dude. So I go out there because I've had a private security company in the past, too. You know, I've got some training from CIA and I, it didn't scare me because it was one guy. But then I walk outside. I'm like, it's a legitimate death threat because the night before that pizza box came from 85 AR carrying patriots because Oregon's an open carry states protecting her salon because they also believed in what she was doing. It was just incredible to be right in the middle of this, man. So then, of course, others across the U.S. we stopped and saw too, just here and there. But some of these stories really stand out. That is mind blowing because I can so clearly remember 2001, 9 11. I mean, I was 21 yeah. years old. I was actually a senior in college in Providence, Rhode Island at PC. And I'm a senior ROTC cadet, ROTC. And, yeah, you know, I yeah. was thinking, hey, you know, the next four years of my active duty and then the next four years of my reserve duty for my eight years, it's going to just kind of, you know, do, I'm going to be doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm going to be an officer in the army. I woke up that morning and I remember looking, you know, at those towers and I just said, man, like my, my next four years, it's real deal. Holy field stuff. Like <laughs> I'm, it I'm is. not going to, yeah. I'm not going to play army anymore. Like this is war. And, yeah. you know, sure enough, like 16 months from that day, I was in Iraq. Like I was in Iraq wow. on a tank in the desert, like driving into Baghdad. Like it was real. And so Man. things can change like that. And, and it's really crazy, Fire Nation. And when we get back from our break, we're going to talk about who we can trust, about when things will get better, if things will get better, and then why an entrepreneur like Rick got involved with this, of course, as soon as we get back from thanking those sponsors. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Fire Nation, meet Clay Clark. Clay has been coaching businesses just like yours since 2006. Yep, even through the Great Recession. And he does it for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee. At a time when Inc. Magazine reports that by default, 96% of businesses will fail within 10 years, Clay is helping businesses like yours to grow on average by 104% annually. You might be wondering, how's this even possible? Well, Clay only takes on 160 clients, which 
means he's able to personally design your business plan. Plus, Clay's team helps you execute that plan with access to graphic designers, Google certified search engine optimizers, web developers, online advertising managers, videographers, workflow mappers, and accounting coaches to help you get on top of your numbers. Visit thrivetimeshow.com slash fire to see thousands of video testimonials from real clients who Clay has helped over the years. Then schedule your free consultation with Clay himself to see how he and his team can help you thrive. That's thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Behind on planning for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, Clavio is here to help. Clavio is the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for online brands of all kinds in all sizes. With email automation, SMS marketing, list growth tools, and more, you'll get everything you need to build strong relationships that keep your customers coming back. In fact, brands made more than $10 billion in revenue through Clavio last year. That's why it's trusted by more than 40,000 brands like Living Proof, Huckberry, and Eight sleep. And with the holiday season right around the corner, Clavio is ready to help you prepare for Cyber Weekend and beyond. Find webinars, guides, and other resources designed to help you make the most of the year's biggest e commerce opportunity. Whether you're a billion dollar business or just starting out, Clavio is the e commerce marketing platform for growth during the holidays and long after. Visit Clavio.com slash holiday to discover strategies for Cyber Weekends. That's K L A V I Y O dot com slash holiday. Holiday. So Rick, we're back and we've been talking about some pretty powerful stuff. And you know, your film Liberty Lockdown is, you know, really getting into the heart of this matter. And when you've been going around and interviewing people and seeing what you're seeing and seeking those answers that you're seeking, who can we trust? That's a super important question. We talked a little bit about the media and what I've seen as I've been talking with all the real people, and even just this past weekend, I was in Minneapolis just on my own for some business that was up there, but I stopped by the George Floyd Memorial. And it was incredible because I walked up to it and there's a big sign that says, welcome to the free state of George Floyd. Mm. And this this area, this, this one single block in this central intersection there at 38th Street is completely stanchioned off. It's barricaded by the people that live around there. And there's a list of demands that they have to the city before they turn those roads back over to the city. It was mind blowing and you hear that and you think, oh, it's anarchy. When when there's there's a gatekeeper at all four roadways that go into the central square and the one that we talked to, as she was saw, she was the most pleasant individual ever. Amazing black woman. And she's just talks. She's like, this is what happened. I'm giving you the introduction to before you walk in. And here's our list of demands. She hands a card and everything. And she's saying all this stuff about George Floyd. And in the middle of it, she stops. She goes, oh, boy, you smell good. I mean, right to me. <laughs> 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 and I mean, at that point, dude, I hugged her right in that moment. Right. And this was just like the embodiment of what I've seen across the United States as as I've been traveling and filming this movie is that everybody really wants the same thing. They want freaking unity and they want to come to a resolution for whether it's systemic racism, whether it's coronavirus, whatever the current crisis is, because this isn't going to be the last crisis in the United States. You know, obviously history tells us that there's always going to be something that comes up. It's just from different sides of the aisle or different ideas. There's just different perspectives on how to get it done. And if there's not a personal agenda involved, the people that you can trust is really yourselves and those around you, meaning every other American that exists, as long as they don't have a self-serving agenda. Because to me, from my perspective firsthand, we all want the same thing. Yeah. yeah and that was just, I mean, I'm standing here right at this, this area of death in Minneapolis, and I'm having a, an amazing conversation, an interracial conversation with a woman that, who is just incredible. You know, and she stops right in the middle of it to turn to me to tell me that I smell good. <laughs> we share a hug. <laughs> that's such and, like a uh, human moment. It really is. And that's what I saw all across the, the United States, man, is, you know, 
people generally will trust each other more than they will some elected officials. And of course, it's just like the police, right? Because one cop doesn't make a million cops bad. One bad politician doesn't make a million politicians bad. And you can even say one lawyer doesn't make a million lawyers bad. I'm naming off all the all the groups, right, that people typically have just right. inborn animosity to. And that's if we can shift that perspective, but a lot of that perspective is really almost shoved down our throats through conditioning and the way that things are spun uh, on TV, on radio, whatever it is. And I, I had a guest on my show, All In With Rick Jordan a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the same thing. Who can we trust? And she goes, you know what? And this is to, to you, JLD. You can trust the podcasters Ooh. because they are really the ones that are out there just telling the straight truth. That's what I try to do on my show. And I know that's what you try to do on your show, too. So true. It's just deliver the straight truth, man. And we're coming from a place. You said that I'm a seeker. Yeah, I'm a seeker. I'm, I'm also a deliverer. You know, not as in like I'm going to save people, but I del- I try to deliver the truth, the message that really exists how it is, unfiltered. Sometimes it could look worse, but other times as I've seen as I've traveled across America, yeah, things look super grim, but it's like almost suppressed right now is that true American spirit on how this country was founded o- over 200 years ago. That's what was really encouraging to where, you know, you also ask, you know, when will things get better? I, I'm hoping soon because I start to see this kind of bubble up and I've seen it firsthand now to where those individuals and that fire is starting to catch on, you know, and it, just like your fire nation, I'm sure, you know, it started a few years ago yeah. with just a couple people. Right. And then all of a sudden it just starts to blossom and just set ablaze. I mean, the California fires are horrible right now and you see how quickly those spread that, that, earnestness of American people is something that's just going to blow up in a very, very good way. And I'm looking forward to this happening really like the beginning of next year, man, to where we start to see just even more unification on some things and some real resolutions to a lot of the situations that are facing us right now. Now, I know you're not Nostradamus, but you have traveled across America. You've lived in it more than 99% of people over the past six months. Yep. You said like the earlier part of this year, but I mean, like when will things really be getting better? Is that like kind of when you're seeing it, like in the January, February timeframe, or do you have some other time frame in mind? I do see it there and I can give you, there's a couple more, more concrete reasons yeah. why. When you look at the data, you know, that was, a, and this is another thing that I found because we, I've interviewed even right-sided people, left-sided people. You know, there was even an epidemiologist from UCLA, kind of a big deal dude, huh. right? Who's on the left side that's in the film. The guy hasn't cut his hair since Trump took office <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> because he's that anti-Trump, but yet he's willing to go on camera and talk about this because of all the misinformation that's out there. You know, and so from what he said and everybody else that's in the film, the experts, that's what it's looking like because it almost seems like in other countries, no matter what they did, whether it was Italy who had just, uh, you know, the oldest country in the world, right? right? You know, or Sweden or Switzerland and England, you know, they all sort of like plateaued and then came back and they, they had like these blips of different waves, just like the United States is experiencing right now. You know, China's a little bit of a different story and that's just because they are they're kind of like anti-freedom. You know, I'm just going to say now, the Chinese people as a whole is not, they're not bad. And I know serving in the military, you understand this because the CCP, the Chinese communist party is only about 73 million people somewhere around that. And there's over a billion people that exist in the whole country. So you're really talking, it's like 7% of right. people actually have sworn their fealty to the co- Chinese communist party, to the CCP. Overall, the Chinese people are pretty great, but they're under a regime that has imposed a lot of heavy lockdowns, you know, to the point to where it's definitely impeded on their freedom. So if Americans think they got it bad, man, that, hmm. that's, it's hard living over there. I had a woman on my show from China the other day, and she explained some of what was going on there and talking with Alan Zhang, like I said at the beginning, just interesting, different perspectives. But Another thing is I was, as far as concrete data is I was at the White House a few weeks ago consulting with the Department of Defense on cybersecurity. And this was all AI based on trying to stop human trafficking. Yeah, and that's something during this time too, that's another cause that's very close to my heart. And the human trafficking has gone up by about tenfold since oh. the lockdown started. Dude, this rips my heart out. You know, and it's not just girls either. You know, I look at my entire family because I have twin 13 year olds and a 10 year old. I've looked at all of them since they were young. And if there was one thing 
that would cause me to want to take somebody else's life in the flash of a moment, it would be if I walked in on somebody doing something to my kids. Right. That protective instinct just traverses even outside of that into any kid or really anybody that's been done wrong or has harm brought to them currently. So when I look at that, that's my part in the cybercrime sequel is I, I have some background. Like I said, I was going to be in the military. I wasn't. I've had a private protection agency. I'm going to get trained and then I'm going to go in the tunnels in Vegas. Because even just Super Bowl Sunday this year, there was over 2,000 kids before the lockdowns that were taken just over Super Bowl Sunday, which is the largest trafficking weekend that exists in America every single year. I'm not talking overseas. I'm not talking in third world countries. I'm talking in the United States. That's the biggest weekend and over 2,000 kids with only about 100 or so found. That's the straight truth, man. That is heart-wrenching and holy crap. So yeah. I think it's pretty obvious as to why you got involved in all of this stuff. I mean, because you just <laughs> hey, you care. <laughs> you just have passion. Yeah. You know, you can't just be somebody that's a, that's a bystander that just, you know, yeah. knows that something exists yet not do something about it. That's just not you. That's not in your DNA. It's just not, you know, Rick Jordan. So break it down for us. Like, let's get right to the core. Why did you get involved specifically in this Liberty Lockdown movie? Here's what I believe, man. There's, there's things that come across your path and there's reasons they come across your path. Yeah, anything that comes at you, you know, if you if you look at individuals that might be struggling with leveling up, you know, whether it's a promotion in their career or finding the right person to marry, finding the right partner, any any sort of life moment that is a positive thing, and they're looking back, reflecting ten years later, saying, you know what, I wish that would have happened for me. And, and usually, at least I found this in my life because I learned this early, man, is that usually those opportunities have come your way. And the reason they've come your way is because you're supposed to act on them. And that could even be, you know, a, a homeless person that you're passing on the street, which I did that in Minneapolis too. And I'm just asking him some questions and he's laughing. I'm like, dude, what are you going to do with money if I give it to you? He goes, I'm going to be straight with you. I'm going to go get myself some fried chicken and a fifth of vodka. Hmm. I'm like, I appreciate your honesty, dude. I'm like, you know what? That's probably going to cost like 15 bucks. So here, I'm going to give you 40. And what are you doing tomorrow? He goes, well, tomorrow I have an appointment with the job center to help get me placed. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about right there. And I was that opportunity for that dude right in that moment. Just like I know that I'm the opportunity for hopefully millions of Americans to actually understand the truth about what has been going on and get an unfiltered perspective just from cameras that have talked to real people and individuals that are not biased or are self-serving. You know, just to get the information that has been filtered so far. You know, and that's even one of the things that I appreciated being at the White House the other week ago, man, is when I was there consulting with the, with the Department of Defense, dude, it was as if the election was not even happening this year. And that's that American spirit that I'm talking about because they didn't care. All they cared about was doing the right thing for the American people. It didn't matter who was going to win come November. Or December, if you want to get into maybe it'll be drawn out. <laughs> but they, they didn't care, man. All they cared about was doing the right thing. And the reason I was there was behind the, the human trafficking side of things and putting things in place for a border. It was just a lot of cool stuff that we were talking about because it's on their radar now, too. Along with different things, of course, with COVID and, and everything else. But the plans that are in place, man, that's why I'm saying beginning of the year, too, is that I see movement at the highest levels in this country because I literally was there and I've seen movements at the lowest levels of this country because I've literally been on the streets. Man, Fire Nation, if you're not inspired to take action in your streets, in your community, in your town, from what Rick's sharing here, I mean, check your pulse because, you know, there's that quote that I've always loved. I'll kind of butcher it a little bit right now, but, you know, it's essentially just that, you know, evil can only win when good people stop stepping up and taking action. And that's right the on. thing, like Fire Nation, like we are the good people. Rick is the good people. Like we are the good people that need to step up and take action. So Liberty Lockdown, give us the one reason why Fire Nation just has to make sure they go out of their way to consume this film. And of course, how can they do that? And then uh, we'll say goodbye. It's going to lift you up. And if you go to libertylockdown.com also, and you'll see the teaser trailer, that'll give you all the reason in the entire world to take a look at that. And for updates too, please follow me at Mr. Rick Jordan on Instagram, because that's where I'm posting most of my stuff. When you come out of this, 
because it's going to be, I was just talking about the ending of the film with the, the director today. You're going to be inspired, you're going to be lifted up, and it's going to put you to that point, like JLD is saying, to where you are a good person and it is now time for you to take action. This is going to spark that fire, not necessarily the entrepreneurial fire, you got JLD for that, but the film is going to spark the fire in America to begin going back to the reasons that we were founded and start to say, I choose America. What a way to end, because Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with RJ and JLD today, so keep up that heat. And if you head over to eofire.com and type a Rick in the search bar, the show notes page will pop up with everything we've talked about today. But your calls to action, Fire Nation, are pretty simple. LibertyLockdown.com. Go check it out. Go check out the trailer. You know, get on the, the email list so you can get reminders and make sure you know when this is coming out because it's going to lift you up. Make sure you go and subscribe to the All In with Rick Jordan podcast because you can tell this guy cares. He drops value bombs. And of course, Mr. Rick Jordan on Twitter. Follow him. All the updates are there. He's dropping value everywhere he goes. And Rick, I just want to say thank you, brother, for being you, for sharing your truth, knowledge, and value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you, and we will catch you on the flip side. Sounds good, brother. Thank you. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Rick. And if you've had your big idea, well, then you'd be ready to ignite. If you don't, well, I have free training for you that will make you ready to ignite. It is going to get you to your big idea in less than an hour. That is less than 60 minutes. Visit yourbigidea.io and get on it. Yourbigidea.io. Get on it. I'll catch you there, Fire Nation, or I'll catch you on the flippity flip side. Fire Nation, with the holiday season right around the corner, Clavio is ready to help you prepare for Cyber Weekend and beyond. Find webinars, guides, and other resources designed to help you make the most of the year's biggest e-commerce opportunity. Visit Clavio.com slash holiday to discover strategies for Cyber Weekends. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash holiday. Looking for a business coach who has helped thousands of entrepreneurs just like you to increase their profitability by an average of 104% per year, all for less money than it would cost to hire a full-time minimum wage employee? Schedule your free consultation today with Clay Clark at thrivetimeshow.com slash fire. Thrivetimeshow.com slash fire.